bad idea. All right, welcome back to our Really Radio Show 129. This is uh, episode E, Bad Ideas. Um, <laughs> sorry, went on a nice little soapbox rant there uh, about uh, the economy and just the way things go. But uh, sometimes things just have to be said. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, in fact, that was all on one. I didn't even get to Bill Murray. I'm very sorry, Fred. <laughs> Oh, that was yours. So actually, uh, just kind of we're we're kind of uh, spinning for time. So actually, uh, before we have our our bad idea, let's let's speak a little bit of Bill Murray. Uh, just going back to back to the good ideas for just a moment. Um, Bill Murray crashes the White House prep briefing <laughs> and answers questions about the Cubs. Fred, take yeah. it away. <laughs> Normally, you know, we we don't really get into the sports world on this show. We we have a you know a particular niche, and we stay to that niche, and that's where we we go. But there are so many little nuances that fit our niche in this story that I just felt it needed to be shared. Um, and and basically, what happened is um, Bill Murray is currently in Washington D.C. Um, on Sunday, he's going to be honored with the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor at the Kennedy Center, and apparently, he took it upon himself to crash the White House press briefing and start answering questions about the Cubs. Um, just as a quick filler for those of you who may not be sports-minded, the Cubs have not been to a World Series since 1945. They haven't won a World Series in well over 100 years, um, and they are currently holding a 3-2 lead with the potential to go to a World Series against an equally hard luck team, the Cleveland Indians. So there's you know a lot of sports history that could be made this particular year in baseball. Um, and... Uh, I did not know that. He, he basically <laughs> um, showed up, took over the press conference, talked up his team, um, you know, gave a little bit of love to the Dodgers, but basically said there's no way the Cubs are going to lose this. They've got it. You know, their bats are too good. Um, he then did later, uh, later meet with Barack Obama, um, who didn't say what they discussed, but did say uh, Murray was wearing a Cubs jacket, which for a White Sox fan is a little troubling. Um, <laughs> And then my favorite part, honestly, about this story, just the, the quick little jabs, is um, Brian Cranston, um, fellow actor, friend of Bill Murray, but a Dodgers fan, um, jokingly took umbrage at Murray's visit, tweeting, proof positive, Cubs surrogate at Bill Murray inside the White House. The NLCS is rigged. If the Crooked Cubs win the series, I will not concede. Crooked, <laughs> crooked Cubs. Nice. And, and that's what I mean by the nuances, is that in something that generally we don't cover, I mean, the stories are all there. You've got the politics, you've got, you know, you've got the humor and the, and the fun and the hyperbole. And then just, you know, what it's all for is, you know, it's, it's just a guy who loves a sport repping his team. But if I do that, I'm doing it here on the, the soapbox of O'Reilly, which is very rare because we don't discuss sports. This was in the goddamn white house <laughs> this qualifies this qualifies absolutely so <laughs> it, it it cracked me up i thought it was funny i wanted to share and there's nothing but good news in this and and, and really the to me the biggest thing is murray getting that award because if anybody deserves an award for american humor to me bill murray is probably one of my favorite funny people of all time i i find him hilarious this kid's just got that dry wit and you know, it's it's been said that uh, if if he happens to encounter you and you have a stack of delicious looking fries on your plate, he may take one, shove it in his mouth and say, no one will ever believe you and then walk away. <laughs> it's been said and I believe it. I this, believe it. <laughs> thank you for posting this, Frank. This makes something that came across my my wall earlier make sense. The fact that it's now been confirmed that wild thing. Charlie Sheen will not be throwing out the first pitch of the World Series. <laughs> the Indians. Nice. Which is, is something that he volunteered to do. As soon as they made the World Series, he reached out to them and said, hey, uh, I'm down. You know, let, let's do this. <laughs> and, and actually, again, going into oh, the sports world. Love um, those stupid movies. <laughs> that, that came about because this Indians team used a Major League-esque um, – statue a shrine essentially that they built up to a joe boo like pedro serrano did in the movie did they sacrifice a bucket of chicken there was chicken there was uh <laughs> cigars there was alcohol given to joe boo Excellent. basically to Excellent. keep two particular players mike napoli and jason kipnis from going through slumps um so that's how that all kind of came about oh. but, 
Yeah, and so he was like, Major League is the gift that keeps on giving, and then volunteered to throw out a first pitch. They respectfully declined, but oh, um, God, he I, did offer. I love the sense of humor that people have, especially around their sports. Uh, that's, that's great. That's great. That was an excellent story. Feel free to bring on uh, sports stories because, you know, that's a demographic that there are people that watch the show that like sports. We can There's we can speak to them on the show that like sports. Just not me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 go sports ball all the way. Okay, my about, sports are like how about that curling? Ball. You know, and, let's, uh, let's get some curling in and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Curling, yes. <laughs> I'm all about the curling. <laughs> all about the curling. Uh, come on, Winter Olympics. Ready for you. Ready for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, actually, bad into idea. bad ideas. Yeah, now back to bad ideas. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a good that palate cleanser before this. It was a good <clears throat> palate cleanser. Uh, and, of course, you know, if you keep watching, then we'll have the picks after this, which is the palate cleanser for this. Um, <laughs> okay. So we, I kind of teased it earlier in, in one of the se- segments. Um, we are a, a, a proponent of, on this show, I, I think universally, of death with dignity laws. So those that are in chronic pain and terminal illnesses uh, should be allowed to pick their time. You know, death with dignity. Be able to to call the ball, as it were, you know, with the sports reference. Yay, sports ball. I can get some of those. Um, but with, um, with the insurance companies, things get a little complicated. So assisted suicide law. This is out on Washington Times. Assisted suicide law prompts insurance company to deny coverage to terminally ill California woman. Why might you ask? Well, it's despicable, is what it is. Uh, if you are, um, you may have uh, have heard of death panels in <laughs> reference to insurance companies. Well, I think we're getting there because basically. Uh, let's let's see. Let's see. OK. Uh, Stephanie Packer, a wife and mother of four who was diagnosed with a terminal form of s- scleroderma. Yes. OK. Uh, my, my thing on the show is also, also mispronouncing everything. I try really hard to do that. It's for you. I do it for you. OK. She said her insurance company initially indicated it would pay for her to switch to a different chemotherapy drug at the recommendation of her doctors. Quote, for a while, five months or so, we've been trying to get me on different chemo drug for infusions because the doctor felt that it would be less toxic than some of the other drugs they were going to be using. Uh, Ms. Packer said in a video distributed by the Center for Bioethics and Culture Network. <laughs> okay, that's who we're talking, talking to here advocating for her. The Center for Bioethics and, and Culture. culture. Uh, yeah, th- those are some big guns, and that does not not bode well for the insurance company when they're on the other side. <clears throat> uh, I was going back and forth and finally had, had heard back from them where they said, yes, we're going to get it covered. We just have to fix a couple of things, she continued. But shortly after, California's End of Life Option Act, which authorizes physicians to diagnose a life-ending dose of medication to patients with a prognosis of six months or less to live, went into effect. Ms. Packer's insurance company had a change of heart. I don't think they could have a change of something they don't have, but be that (laughs) as it may. When the law was passed, it was a week later I received a letter in the mail saying they were going to deny coverage for my chemotherapy that we were asking for. Uh, She said she called her insurance company to find out why the coverage had been denied. On the call, she also asked whether suicide pills were covered under her plan. You see where this is going? Do you see? And she says, yes, we do provide that to our patients. And you would only have to pay $1.20 for the medication, said Ms. (laughs) Packer. Ms. Becker said her doctors have appealed the insurance company's decision twice to no avail. She said the assisted suicide law creates an incentive for insurance companies to deny terminally ill patients coverage. So, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so there, it's like, okay. I have, I have two things. I want to live! The, the first thing is, um, just so that people know what scleroderma is, 
Um, mm -hmm. It's also known as systemic sclerosis, which is a long-term autoimmune disease that results in the hardening of the skin. So this is essentially the disease that where your skin starts to harden and you lose the ability of elasticity in your skin. So things like breathing become difficult and oh. eventually impossible and you suffocate in your own body. Um, you know, and then there are other issues with like kidneys, esophagus, uh, heart, lungs, you know, that you may have, but essentially it becomes very painful and very scary to mm. live in your own body. Um, and then the second thing is I, I started thinking as you were talking mm -hmm. about, cause we've had the, the conversation about insurance and assisted suicide and, and those type of things before. Yeah. And generally the conversation is insurance is not covering for those people electing death with dignity. Now that there is a law that says they have to, the shift is okay we just won't cover treatment yeah. and we'll push you on the assisted suicide as the dirtiest tactic in the game of we don't want anyone to have that option because it takes money out of our pockets so we're just not going to let them utilize our services mm -hmm. it does kind of go with a uh, you know uh, congressman alan grayson's uh, statement that the Republican health plan is die and die quickly. You don't get sick. If you get sick, die quickly. Yeah, if you don't yeah. get sick, die. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to die quickly, we're only going to give you that option. So if hey, you've got six months left to live, 20. that's that's it. Like you, It's not six months left to live. It's you better die quick because all we're giving you is the option to die. The prescription for the for the death medic medicine, I don't know what it is, but you know whatever it is, it costs less than my kid's school lunch. Yeah, a dollar mm -hmm. twenty. So, we see here that there is financial incentive for them to cut their losses on you. They've done it before. You know, the insurance companies are famous, infamous, if you will, for oh no. Florida has hurricanes? Well, we're not going to do business in Florida anymore. Mm -hmm. This just is, you know, cancer is the hurricane of, of health coverage. Incidentally, even with um, government programs like Medicaid, um, some of the, uh, w when you get onto Medicaid, uh, usually they won't let you just be on straight Medicaid. You have to pick what's called a managed Medicaid plan. Um, and there's a couple different options. There's like Sunshine, there's Stay Well, um, there's, uh, gosh, there's another one, a Molina. Um, there's a bunch of different options and each one uh, will send you to a different set of providers. Mm -hmm. Several of the managed Medicaid plans have withdrawn from Florida or they have stopped working with places like Publix or in some cases, Walgreens or CVS to provide prescriptions to people who are under those plans. Um, so this is even affecting ju just the, the shenanigans of insurance as a whole, as a concept, yeah. is even affecting people who are on the government programs um, where they're trying to cut costs. Right, because the government programs ultimately are still controlled by the insurance companies because that's who they basically outsource them to. Yep. So, hey, folks, single payer. Mm hmm. That re the government, like the rest of the developed world, yeah. You know? The government is not in it to make a profit. That's why it's okay to let them do it because then they're not profiting off your pain. Well, you know, as, I, as I've said before, unlike you know, private insurance companies, private companies, everything else like that, have a vested interest in getting as much money as they can and putting as little money out as possible. Yeah. The government in general has a vested interest in keeping you alive. Yeah. Tax money. Yeah. You're, 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 a, you're, alive, you're a revenue stream. You're yeah. I mean, you don't even have to go to tax money. You don't even have Just to look ethics. at money. The Just government ethics. can't exist if you're not alive to elect them. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Because if you're dead, technically speaking, well, if you're dead and haven't cast the absentee vote for that year, <laughs> oh, your vote doesn't stop count. Stop with the voter fraud. Come on. Really? No, 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 that, no, that's not voter fraud. That's actually allowable. If it's inside the proper early voting time yeah. and you file it, but then you die before the election day, your vote still counts. Ghost voters. Ghost voters. Ghost voters. The actual legal ghost voters because you yeah. cast it while you were still alive. Yeah. 
hanging chad mm-hmm. no. <laughs> yeah i want to hang those damn chads <laughs> oh so yeah so yeah th- death panels this is literally this is a death this panel. is a death panel that they screamed about yeah back in the day this is not the good stuff that we were wanting the whole idea of death with dignity of being able to say, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is going to go down and have these end-of-life conversations. Yeah, where's the commentary by Carly Fiorina? Kind of well, if I recall, weren't, weren't death panels also something that were talked about in the context of a single-payer system, of that like the yeah. government would be able to decide, but now we have the private insurance companies doing it. Right. You're right. So. You're exactly right. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like, well, you were kind of right, but you're <laughs> wrong. <laughs> and look, hey, now we have to deal with it. So. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Hey, at least it's only going to cost you a buck twenty. <laughs> and well, it's it's so disgusting to me because this is, especially for for people who are poor, mm-hmm. people who are struggling to make ends meet anyway, and and a lot of them who who do have insurance, maybe through a program like the Affordable Care Act, um, you know, they're already having trouble getting certain things covered. Granted, they can't really exclude you for a pre-existing condition, but you can still right. have a hell of a time getting necessary uh, coverage for, for procedures that you absolutely need. And this is, um, I mean, that's where it's going to hit the hardest is for people who were already struggling with that. Yeah, I, I just want a healthcare system that does what the doctor says. You want a healthcare system that cares about your health? No, no, no. I, I don't want them to care either. I have no desire at all for them to have any feelings. I just want them to do what the doctor tells them to. If the doctor says, I need medicine X, if medicine X is in a generic, awesome. But I still want the equivalent of medicine X. I don't want to be, nope, I'm sorry, we can't cover Medicine X, so you'll have to pay for that out of pocket for $30,000. It's like, or sorry, we're not going to cover Medicine X, but we will cover Medicine Y. Right. Which has all these real fun side effects that Medicine X didn't have. And so if you're going to go on Medicine Y, you'll also have to be on Medicine. uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 <laughs> and, you know, all these other medicines just to counter the side effects from Medicine X mm-hmm. or Medicine Y or Medicine Z. Yes, terrible things. So yeah, that's... Real, uh, real, no, real quick, just to, yeah. to jump back and, and call mm-hmm. back to something we had talked about earlier in regards to um, two truths yeah. and, and two different sides of the things. And you had mentioned... Um, the death panels and and where is uh, Carly Fiorino now? Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where it it is it's two truths because if I have to look at a death panel that is monetizing a human being a life or a death panel that's choosing if you live or die based upon quality of life and you know what your prognosis is for any type of future you know living capacity. I think I'm going to go with the group that's looking out for can they, you know, survive this or is it likely they're going to be a vegetable or worse? Quality of life. You know, it, it, yeah. those are the two truths. When, when you are against the so, quote unquote death panel that's looking out for human decency, but you're perfectly fine with the actual that guy is too expensive to keep alive. Mm-hmm. That is exactly what we were talking about earlier, and well, we just got to hear, and it's another example of. Well, it. that's why a lot of people commit suicide when they get super sick, because they know that it's going to be super expensive for them to live. They don't exactly. want to, they don't want to be a burden on their family or society or whatever whatever clicks with them. They don't want to be a burden, or they don't want to be in excruciating agony, and that's what the Death with Dignity Act is for. Now, Miss Packer. She is motivated to fight because, quote, I want to live for my kids. I want them to see that dying is a part of life. Uh, Your end of life can be that opportunity to appreciate things you didn't appreciate before, to say things that you didn't say before. So at this point, if she doesn't get this medicine, she's going to die an awful lot faster 
And she's not going to have time to work on any bucket lists or anything like that. She's not going to have time to live for her kids with her kids. You know, yeah. She it's it's a limited time span. She has a limited time. Here's I mean this this may not work, but this is a thought I just had. Um assisted suicide without consent is murder. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that, so that is, that is, oh. I believe, if you're only giving her the option of you're going to die <laughs> or you're going to die with this pill quicker and she doesn't like that option because oh. she didn't ask for assisted suicide. Fred, you're brilliant. It's Ooh. murder there. Yeah. Nice. One of my one of my favorite nice. quotes from from Spike on the TV show Angel was it's not murder if you say yes. <laughs> but in this case exactly yeah oh look consent comes back up again I th- <laughs> Fred I think you need to email Miss Packer <laughs> I, I mean, I, or I, at least her attorneys I will, I will yeah. do my best to, to put that in a more coherent thought but this is attempted good. this is attempted murder that just jumped out like I mean when you're giving no other options like in this scenario, I'm like, Andy, how's that air you need to breathe? Hold on a second. <laughs> let me put this bag over your head. Oh, you didn't you didn't ask for the bag over your head option? Well, the the bag only costs a dollar twenty. <laughs> you know, like so, eventually this air is going to kill you. There's enough poison in it true. to eventually kill you. So it's, instead of letting true. you wait long enough, I'm gonna provide you with a much cheaper, quicker alternative. Oh, you don't you don't want that? I don't give a fuck. Have fun dying. <laughs> well, you know, Fred, when you put it like that, I really. What can I say? Yeah. Okay, so it, let's see. What's the title of this one? Insurance Company Attempts Murder? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Assisted suicide without consent is murder. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> just that. Okay. Non, non-consensual suicide is murder. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> there must be enthusiastic consent wow. for suicide. There must be... Consistent, enthusiastic consent for suicide. <laughs> oh my gosh! Assisted Welcome suicide without it. consent is murder. There we go. Okay, yeah, there um, you go. Well done, Fred. That needs to that needs to go go viral right there. Insurance company attempts murder. Wow. And and that's one of those wow. things that I don't know if it's something where it's like. There can't be somebody else that didn't think about it, but it may be so out there as an initial thought that no one may have thought about that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. You Go definitely, you. yeah, you. like you, you gave voice to something very succinctly that I've heard a lot of people in, in situations, uh, where, like I was saying before, where you're poor and you're desperately trying to live, um, where they always, they they essentially say things like, you know, they're the insurance companies are trying to kill us. Like, they are. Like, they just <laughs> they want us to die. They want us to go away. So yeah, like you you put very succinctly what I think a lot of people feel, which is why it resonates the way that it does. Yeah. Wow. I was bound to get something right eventually. Nailed it. <laughs> 